everybody. Welcome to ICC's Game of the Week with your host as always, Joel Benjamin. For Game of the Week, I'm as much a sucker for crazy tactical games as everyone else, but every now and then I'm in the mood for a slow groove. This week I would like to feature a technical squeeze executed by Polish GM Radoslav Wojtaszek over 22-year-old Armenian Grandmaster Samvel Ter Sahakian. I was drawn to this game because it illustrates how tactics are interwoven into strategical play and that end games are not just about pawns but about coordination of the pieces as well. All right, let's get to it. Wojtaszek is playing white. And it's a, a Slav. A very, a very, very popular opening at the Grandmaster level. So really everybody gives us a lot of thought how they, how they want to, uh, to, to play this opening with both sides. And here Wojtaszek plays e3. Now white can also play knight c3. And then of course black has the option of taking on c4. It's not protected. And then white will have to lose a tempo with a4, and that leads to a whole body of theory. Also, of course, black can play e6, which will send it to, um, you know, maybe the Botvinnik system or the, uh, or the Moran. But the other popular move here uh, is, is e3. So white just defends the pawn right away, and he's not going to try to bring out the bishop to c1. Now, the advantages of it, obviously, it does not allow the knight c3, uh, like knight c3, it doesn't allow d takes c4. Okay, of course, black can take on c4, but white takes back without having to waste any time. The downside of it is that black has the opportunity to develop the bishop. So black could play uh, bishop f5, for instance, this line, and then knight h4, white goes after the bishop, otherwise really gets nothing. Uh, that's that's been often played. I think that these days Bishop G4 might be actually a little bit of a hotter move. Um, but in both cases, Black will try to get his problem Bishop outside of the pawn chain. Now, White, White can also try to play Slav move orders with Knight C3 and E3 and keep the other Knight back. But another point to this um, this move order is that. White sometimes has the option of delaying, of, of, de of developing the knight to d2, and I'll, I'll get to that. But anyway, in this game, black just opts for the, the kind of Moran treatment with e6. And now bishop d3, so no knight c3. Now, one of the points of this is that uh, by, de by delaying knight c3, um, the, the Moran approach really doesn't make much sense. For instance, knight bd7, castles, d takes c4, bishop takes c4, b5. Now, if the knight is on c3 instead of white being castled, this is a perfectly normal position. But a lot of this uh, rides on black having a tempo with the pawn coming to b4 to drive away a knight. And uh, in this case, it just uh, isn't going to work that way. Black is going to have more trouble getting, getting in the move c5. So the, the b5 advance seems less appropriate without a knight on c3. Now, after bishop d3, Tersahakian takes on c4. He does that awfully early. Um, and... Uh, I was wondering a little bit as, as as to why he rushes that move. For instance, he can he can develop some pieces like knight bd7, castles, bishop d6. Uh, but if he if he plays this way, then perhaps white will go knight to d2. So so now when black takes, if black should take on c4, the knight can recapture attacking the bishop, and maybe white will will push e4. And otherwise, white can play for the e4 advance himself. So there are quite a few nuances involved.